Hey guys, this is Noel on PC, the Vice President of the Experimental Research Division here at the Kerbal Space Program. And today, I actually made a plan this time, and we are going to use a Kerbal X rocket to get this little uh, lander up into orbit. Today we're going to do a three-man Mars and back mission. So I'm pretty excited about this. I'm hoping uh, when we actually get to the launch pad, uh, Patney Kerbin will be one of the three Kerbal participants. He was the uh, he was the little Kerbal man that went to the moon and back successfully in the last video. So we're just going to jump right onto the launch pad because this craft is already done for us, but it is untested. I've gotten it, you know, I got it up into kind of or, you know 10,000 meters or so and thought okay good enough and I backed right out so it is an untested craft for the most part and I'm glad to see Patney Kerbin is there let's see what seat is he in he is in the back seat so he's kind of seemingly along for the ride which is odd even though he has a full control spectrum let's let's just take a peek at the other guys so these are the two in the front seat there's buddy you can see out the window um, oh, out his window actually is the launch pad. Let's go to his. The oh, wrong one again. There we go. Yeah, so there's the launch pad and stuff. These guys are already con mission control. There is you know prepping all systems and stuff. While well, these guys just wait it out and pee in their little catheter bags. Psst, psst. Let's see, is there a throttle? Oh, the throttle works. Oh, isn't that cute? Zip, 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 zip. Okay. Um, just turning on. SAS, get the throttle up a bit, and five, four, three, two, one. We have liftoff. Everything's looking good so far. At a ton of speed, this Kerbal X rocket has a nice way of dropping off stages two at a time very, very efficient means of getting a lot of lift, getting a lot of payload weight up into space by shedding off some of the rockets that are no longer necessary, like right now. There's two more. So basically those, those the first two fed into the second two uh, that feed from the third two that feed from the main body. So the main body is actually gulping gas out of these tiny little side guys. Again, it's, it's just a very efficient means of generating lift. So there we go. We have lifted our massive payload to 5,000 meters, or about 15,000 feet-ish. I don't really know what the conversion is. Uh, and we've used virtually none of the fuel in the main body. So yeah, that was a drastic success. Another fuel-efficient means of travel are the nuclear engines. Uh, they have a great um, fuel consumption once they're in the vacuum of space, once they're very cold, um, some kind of a nuclear process occurs, and it, uh, it just, apparently it just rocks. I'm not too familiar with the nuclear engines. I haven't used them too much because they're always on that second page in the propulsion uh, category, and honestly, I just never really look at the stuff on the second page. I just grab rockets and shoot. So we're hitting 12,000 meters, 200 meters a second. I'm going to turn off SAS. I'm going to start rolling it over a little bit at a time here. So we want to start turning some of this vertical speed into lateral speed to begin our orbit. So yeah, things are looking great so far. Our main tank is about 60% done, 70% done. But that's fine because this thing was basically just designed to get us into a nice orbit and those nuclear engines are definitely going to be able to get us to Mars. Providing we can get a ton of lateral speed here. We're going to go pretty much full throttle. I'm going to try and get as much gas. Try to make it, sorry, try to get as much speed as we can out of the gas we have remaining. Things are going good. 750. That's what I wanted to see. About 800 before we turn on the nuclear engines. 
There we go. Break away. Your engine's on. Alright, so now these nuclear engines shouldn't have a whole lot of trouble with getting us up to speed, getting us into a nice orbit, and then slingshotting for Mars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some auto saves and some reloads, and we're going to get ourselves into an orbit on Mars in the most efficient means possible, but that is going to take me a really, really long time. And I'm definitely not going to sit here and make you watch that. So guys, we'll be right back and hopefully we'll be in Mars and not smashing back into Earth. So I want you to cross your fingers for me. Literally, do it right now. Thank you. Okay. And wish me luck, guys. Okay, guys, here we are at Mars. We, again, used the autosave, not autosave, but the quick save, quick load, there we go, process to get a really nice throw towards Mars. We used all our nuclear fuel in slowing ourselves down after we had actually slingshotted around, if I can see it. No, I can't see it. We actually got a really nice slingshot around uh, Mars's moon. I, I don't know what it's called, unfortunately, but you know, we got a really nice slingshot and it started to slow us down. We came around behind the moon. We got a really nice throw towards Mars. It just, it all, it all coalesced into just a perfect storm of just awesomeness. So now this is the crater right here that we're going to try and plunk this thing down in, but we are going awful fast. So it may involve slowing down, doing another lap around the moon. And then uh, coming back around again. That would probably be the best way to do it. But, actually, no, this thing is a champ. Wow. Okay, so no, this thing has an awesome air brake. So we are going to be able to basically just fall straight down into that crater. We're going to time accelerate to around here somewhere. There we go. Point our ass to the wind again. There we go. So we just want this line, this is where we're heading, to fall right in that crater there. Not quite in the dead center, because we probably will under or overshoot. We want it to kind of be on the far edge there, I would suspect. Actually, no, we'll just we'll shoot for center, because we are going to fall straight down into it. This is how I prefer to land. It is not how most people prefer to land. Again, this is just how I do it. Good enough. The cry of the Kerbal Space Program. Good enough. All right, so. Going to do a little, uh, a little jog along here. Speed up while we descend and fall. fast. We want to just start controlling some of this speed because we are going to start hitting the atmosphere at some point but if I pull that chute out the whole craft may just rip apart. If we exert far too much force on it it'll just hoopla the whole craft. Yeah so we're coming basically straight down but oh uh oh but the, uh, the whole planet is kind of rotating unfortunately. Um, So we may come down on the crater rim, which I'm very concerned about. I'm just going to deploy our landing gear here. There we go. I'm going to try and recalibrate our landing site to maybe be a little more towards the middle, just to basically just fight some of the um, rotation of Mars. We we're just gonna we just I got some lateral speed there real quick. So basically what that does is allows us to go with the rotation of Mars. Now we're starting to hit atmosphere. You can see up at the top here this little blue bar. That's sort of the thickness of the air. So basically we want to pull a chute somewhere around 
here, but when we're going no more than about 300 or so meters a second. You really don't want to be going super fast, but you want to almost time when your speed is going to hit. So we're, we're okay here at about 300, but I want to be quite a bit slower because we're doing okay. I'm going to really gently finesse this down in a way to best preserve fuel and more than likely preserve our craft. Because again, we have Patney Kerman here. This guy is a fucking superhero on, uh, on Kerbin or Earth. Uh, he is the only Kerbal to successfully not only go to the moon, but he came back. He came back like a champ. That guy's the man. Okay, so I'm going to deploy the chute. I think I deployed the chute. I guess it just needs more air. Yeah, it must, me it must need a minimum velocity. There we go. Apparently that's about 120 meters a second. So, can we see a shadow? Not yet. It's always good to, well, you've still got a bit of altitude, find your shadow, because that's what you're going to use to tell you exactly how far away from the ground you are. No, I don't see a shadow yet. Come on, shadow. Might not actually even get a shadow. Okay. We're just going to go old school. Like John Glenn, Neil Armstrong, old school. We're going to go analog here. So basically, I'm just watching the horizon. That's always a good way to control your descent, is to watch the horizon instead of straight down. I mean, when you're looking straight down, you can't really tell. We, we can make no distinction of how far away we are. But as soon as you look out, all of a sudden it becomes quite obvious how far away from the ground you are. So we're almost down. I could go into the cockpit and check the... Uh, I think there's like a digital laser guided type uh, altimeter. But again, I prefer the old school analog. Just look out the window. Okay, so we want to slow way down. We want to be going at no more than about 10 when I hit the ground to minimize the amount of bounce. Because that bounce is just awful. Oh, there's Shadow. Good stuff. Huzzah! Okay, guys, there we go. We actually successfully made it to Mars with a three-man crew. That is amazing. So let's get this guy out, Patney Kerbin, the only Kerbin to go to the moon and back, and now one of three Kerbins that got to go to Mars, of all places. So let's get Patney down. Come on, Pat. Patney Kerbin, come on down! Beep, 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 beep. This is one small step for Kerbal, one giant leap for Kerbal Kind. Let's see, how's the gravity here? Oh, it's pretty low. Pretty low, I'll say. Wow, look how happy he is. Once again, man, this is the happiest Kerbal alive. Let's see, bring out the little jets. Wow, actually, actually a lot of gravity here. This is a big planet. So what that means, folks, is we do not have enough fuel to get home. Um, so we can do one of two things. We can put this guy into an orbit around Mars, hopefully, uh, and come back for him later, where we would just basically have to uh, fly a pod of some kind out here with enough fuel to get home uh, and just have him enter the pod. Or we shoot for the Earth, and basically just hope to either hit it or hope to at least get near it and maybe 
try and send up someone to intercept it. I mean, all of these things sound just awful, uh, especially for Patney Kerbin. It's a good thing Patney can't actually hear us here at, uh, you know, Houston. Because, man, we're making some tough decisions on his behalf here. Uh, let's, let's just go back inside and get out. It's not fair that Patney be the only Kerbal that get to actually step foot on Mars. Because if this is going to be a suicide trip, at least these guys should be able to get to enjoy it a little bit. So they're going to get out and get some rock samples. Maybe look for signs of life. I've heard that's something that they always do on Mars. All right, so the trio is out. Ooh, bam. All right. All right, fellas. Having a little conversation, having a little fun, fun time, happy fun time. Huzzah! All right, let's get them back in. We'll get them back in, and you know, I think I think we're just gonna shoot for Earth. We're gonna just do our best. We've got a little bit of RCS, so we can potentially kind of aim ourselves. Maybe? I don't know. More than likely, these, these guys are just doomed, which is just so sad. It is very sad, but that they knew that when they signed up to be part of the Kerbal Space Program. They knew that there's a good chance that they could, you know, die on the launch pad or, you know, have to take their cyanide tablet that's in their spacesuit. You know, you just... The life of an astronaut's tough stuff. All right, so Patney Kerbin making his final ascent back up into the spacecraft here on Mars. All right, he takes one last look and he climbs in. So again, we have very, very little fuel and I don't think, no, we can't take off with air. <laughs> That's a damn shame. So we're gonna basically just burn and try and get into a orbit again. All right, let's see what happens. Well, fuck. So that is shitty. Slow down, slow down. Uh-oh, uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, good, good, yeah, good. Okay, whew. all right. So, uh, Patney Kerbin, S what the fuck does that say? Sonlorf? What kind of name is Sonlorf? Uh, Burfred and Patney are stranded, essentially, on Mars. So, guys, what we're going to do is in the next episode, we're going to send a rescue mission out here to pick up Sonlorf, Burfred, and Patney Kerbin. Uh, Patney being the, the one we're actually going to rescue. I could give a fuck less about the other two. Uh, Patney is too much of a Kerbal hero uh, to not go rescue. We would be doing him a grievous disservice if we were to just abandon him out here. Whoa, whoa. Trying to level out the spacecraft, sorry, sorry, just ignore everything I'm doing here. Wow, okay. There we go, okay. We're going real fast though. Uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping this doesn't explode. I can't really air brake. Oh, there we go, whew, okay, that scared the shit out of me. I thought for sure it was gonna explode. So guys, as I said, the next episode is going to be a rescue mission, so definitely uh, follow that link at the top. Uh, give me a sub, you know, it helps me rank, it helps other people see the videos, and I always appreciate that. You can also leave me a comment. Um, what I encourage you to do is comment and tell me what games you're playing right now, or what games you think I should make a Let's Play on, because all my games are user-submitted. You guys have told me about all these. So guys, oh shit, okay, I hope that didn't land on the door. And it did. Okay. Can I can I write this thing? 
There we go. Okay, beautiful. So these guys are going to just hang out here and eat some, uh, you know, astronaut food and in little toothpaste tubes. Uh, and they're going to wait for our next video, which hopefully won't be too soon. So keep an eye out for it, guys. And until next time, cheers.